Institute for Industry, Energy and Emerging Technology Research and Development, or PCIEERD, the Department of Science and Technology in the Philippines. Her current work is about advanced materials, nanotechnology, optics, and photonics. Today, she is going to present on nanotechnology initiatives and prospects in the Philippines. So, please give a big applause to Ms. Desiree Vera to the stage. My name is Desiree Vera. I'm from the Philippines. I'm a senior research, uh, senior science research specialist under the Department of Science and Technology, which is quite equal to the ministry here. Um, I'm working. Um, uh, I'm a project manager for projects under the advanced materials, nanotechnology, and optics and photonic sectors, offering R&D for various universities in the Philippines. So it is my honor to present to you the initiatives and prospects of nanotechnology in the Philippines. So I'd like to tell you where we've been, where we are, and where we intend to go. So I hope you bear with me, and I hope this is a very unholy hour. This is after lunch, so I hope I don't worry. Uh, so let me just begin by telling you who we are. So the Philippine Council for Industry, Energy, and Emerging Technology Research and Development which we call T-shirt. This is a very mouthful um, agency name, so let's just call it T-shirt for now. It's one of the three sectoral planning councils under the Department of Science and Technology. The focus of um, T-shirt as a funding council is to set general direction for R&D in the industry, energy, and emerging technology centers. Um, the other two sectoral planning councils are focused on health, and the other one is um, on agriculture. Basically, the mandate of the shared is um, we want to support research and development locally, uh, human resource and institutional development, SP information dissemination and promotion, support for tech transfer, and commercialization and family policy development. Um, Kushar envisions to be the preferred partner in terms of RD, and by 2040, uh, we envision to be the nexus of, an, of innovation. The leading contributor to the nation's productivity, competitiveness, by enabling scientific technology solutions in the industry and general technology sectors, while upholding, of course, the tenets of good governance. To do this, um, uh, we would like to provide strategic leadership uh, in, in enabling it, uh, innovation in the following sectors that I mentioned earlier. Uh, when we, while we commit to formulating national policies, Plans, programs, and strategies for science and technology, development in the industry, energy, and technology sectors, to, add, uh, to allocate government and generate external funds for research and development and to manage uh, SDI, programs and projects implemented and supported by the Council towards utilization and eventually ad adoption of the industry. Um, let me tell you the sectors that we, um, that we support. These are basically 24 of them, and 21 of them. Um, uh, generally divided into industry, energy, and emerging technology, as I have continuously mentioning. In other day, emerging technology, we're supporting genomics, biotechnology, uh, information and communication technology, space technology, photonics, artificial intelligence, data science, and creative industries. And under the emerging technology is the material science and nanotechnology, which I will be showing you later on. Uh, we're also catering to special concerns such as climate change, disaster, disaster risk reduction and management, uh, environment and annual security. So let me just tell you a story about the, the accomplishment that we did uh, last year. So uh, the Philippines allocated about 714 million pesos. That's around 340 something million in VAT, if my math is correct. Um, this is uh, the council's fund for uh, all, this, all the sectors that I mentioned earlier. And for the USGA, this is the, the mother agency, like the ministry, it uh, allocated about 1.685 billion pesos, which is about 1 billion that. So I don't know if that even fares with the funding here in, the, in Thailand, but 
that's basically how we did it in the case. So we had 106 completed projects, 11 of which were COVID related. Uh, we responded to the COVID uh, needs that time. And uh, we received 770 proposals, funded 159 projects, and the rest is the MSP. So we had um, nine inter international corporations back in 2020, and the rest of the data, like the number of product leaders, are also here. Specifically for the Emerging Technology Development Division, where I belong. So these are the accomplishments. Um, we had 26 projects, 28 new, uh, new products funded for the year. We had 49 ongoing projects, 70 proposals received for 2024 funding, and 30 of which were already approved. We had seven product leaders, two new higher education institute partners, uh, new local government partners, and then we invited two international cooperation policies. Um, just to tell you how we're doing. Uh, in terms of nanotechnology. So back in 20, 2009, when the council is still um, not merged with uh, with another council focusing on industry, we started formulating the nanotechnology roadmap. And to do that, uh, perhaps this is the most notable accomplishment of the of the council. So we, we had a white paper, it's titled Nanotechnology Prospects and Priorities. But it only covered up to 2015 at that time. So the key topics uh, that were discussed in this book were food and agriculture, polymers and composites, energy, biomedicine, ICT and electro and semiconductors, environment and nanotechnology risk, or safety, and then finally education. And then electronic for electronic materials, we had um, so they called it another lab. It is in the Industrial Technology Development Institute in in also in USD, uh, we had an um, HRTM facility that does the US had the double shower probably later on. Fuel cell applications, um, printed electronics, and other kind of materials for our various applications. So back in 2015 to 2017, uh, we had an initiative. Uh, this is to this intends to uh, rationalize or rationalize and benchmark with other countries in terms of the graduate programs and research in material science and nanotechnology across uh, various countries in Asia. So that included, uh, if you can see here, there's um, Nanotech in Thailand, so we went here. Uh, representatives of the US, we went here, and also Trudeau for University. Together with that, uh, they also went to benchmark, benchmark uh, with uh, National Taiwan University, uh, KASP, and um, University in Malaysia and Islam. So back, uh, during the pandemic, we had a um, consulta consultative meeting on advanced materials and technology uh, in order to consult uh, the stakeholders in terms of what we think about the roadmap at that time. Uh, this, is, this was conducted uh, via, web, via, via Zoom web conferencing and was attended by 34 uh, participants. And during that um, forum, uh, they identified the current areas that are listed here, number one smart materials, materials informatics, the nano safety program, and then materials for energy. So let me just uh, give you a preview of what the nanotechnology roadmap of the two looks like right now. This is actually the R&D roadmap, not the general roadmap in terms of nanotechnology. This, this does not include uh, those that are being done in the industry, but this, uh, but also uh, but during the consultative meetings that we had, we had industry representatives, and they were able to give input on this one. So I know this. I, I know you can't read it very well. So let's just zoom into the one on the left side. So the overall strategy were the overall strategies were four four. So first one is facilities and services enhancement of facilities. Uh, focus on human re human resources and R and D technologies and then policies. So, as far as facilities and services are concerned, there are uh, DOST supported uh, support facilities such as Admadal and the Pat Center, uh, and DOST intends to continue the support for these facilities. 
So for human resources, uh, we increased awareness through STEM curriculum, um, sending researchers and students abroad, and established new programs to, to increase the visibility of nanotechnology and companies abroad. So for the R&D technologies, um, the topics listed on your right are the topics that we currently support. The one on the uh, the one the ones colored green are completed. The blue ones are ongoing, and the red ones are the prospects. So um, I can give you a copy of this if you want later on. So more recently, in in March 19, uh, this uh, just this March 19, we have been conducted an advanced materials and energy focus group discussion to validate that inputs on the roadmap. Uh, this is participated by 44 um, total attendees from the academic industry and the Puerto Rico and public scientists. So these are, public scientists are um, researchers abroad, from uh, Filipino researchers abroad that are encouraged to do researches, uh, research, researches here in the Philippines. Uh, I'd just, just like to highlight uh, where we are in terms of material safety because this is one of the identified priorities. So during the focus group discussion, we had a SWOT analysis. And this is not a very intensive SWOT analysis, but it's just a listing of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats and threats to be identified. Uh, initially, the USD through the um, Industrial Technology Development Institute uh, had, um, had a work done on materials, materials safety. And they did benchmarking with various international universities and local uh, local laboratories, also international laboratories, to uh, to identify what the facilities are, what the capabilities are. So that's what they did. So for the opportunities, uh, they were able to identify commercially commercial applications with nanomaterials, particularly those that are locally produced, development of innovation protocols, products. And Establishment of standards. We actually were involved in the Department of Trade and Industry Bureau of Product Standards Technical Committee 85. This is standard technology. And um, the opportunities that we saw uh, included uh, promotion of data technology to data steel or data labeling, validation of commercial product, product claims, uh, enhanced, uh, product claim and enhancement through data technology, and um, establishing a facility for so the threats that we they identified were the limited capability in some technical aspects of testing and research of nanomaterials, and possible negative perception, and possible intrusion of false use of nanomaterials. materials. Uh, this is an authenticity problem and other sustainable conditions. So this is very quick. This are the this very art. There, what we are funding in terms of support facilities to the communities. So. Uh, this is called the UPLB Nanoscience and Technology Facility Building. So back in 2012, we had a big program involving researchers. This, uh, this is a program with about 12 projects. Uh, and this, uh, this, this, uh, sorry, this building is part of the counterpart of the University of Philippines was bad. So they funded the building out, uh, as part of their counterpart for the projects that the USB funded. And under that laboratory, uh, it's an analytical and instrumentation service laboratory. I don't know if it's yet, but uh, there's an AFM there, DET, ICT, OES, uh, and VLS, XRD, and a lot more. So we can take a picture and then maybe you can ask me later. And I'd be glad to connect you with the, um, the laboratory if you need it. So the next one is the Advanced Device and Materials Testing Laboratory. The intention of this laboratory initially was to support um, the, uh, the electronics industry. So these are their services. They have uh, FIP, SEM, ES, PUFSIMS, FDIR, thermal analysis, and other sample preparations. And recently, they acquired a 3D, a 3D CD X ray uh, that can actually fit a person. So that's their current capability. Uh, next, this is the newest addition to the uh, facilities that we, uh, that we support. This is a manufacturing center or AMSEN. 
it's an actually an additive manufacturing facility. So there are two parts to this. Uh, it's a big program. The first one is materials development. This is one of the component projects of Amazon. Uh, it aims to develop various materials from locally sourced um, local, local sources as a feed. So what they do is that they uh, develop, characterize, test the prototype, and um, perform other um, characterizations to various materials that can be used as feed in additive manufacturing. The second one is called Rapid Advent. They house big equipment, not they have big equipment such as one is here. Uh, they are for prototyping, yeah, basically for prototyping. This one is an additive manufacturing center under the uh, Institutional Development Program. It's called Amsterdam. The focus is to use um, additive manufacturing for ceramics. This is um, also in the National Capital Region of this one, um, the Additive Manufacturing Research Laboratory in Agro, is situated in one of the regions in in the Philippines. So this is to establish a regional competitiveness in terms of additive manufacturing. So just so you know, um, the Philippines, through the Department of Science and Technology, had uh, international collaborations. So right now, these are the international collaborations that we have. First one is, I think you're very familiar with this, JSPS, and then there's the Asia, where Thailand is part of, and that's uh, USD and OSD in China. Uh, the Mecateco, or the Manila Economic and Cultural Office, Taipei Economic and Cultural Office. Uh, more recently, PH India, and the Philippines Joint Research Project, and um, the Philippines Korea Joint Science and Development Research Project. So with this having known our capability and where we'd like to go, uh, maybe this is a call for collaboration, not just uh, from Thailand, but also from other universities abroad. And uh, I think this is a very good opportunity for us to talk about what we can do to further nanotechnology research, not just locally, but globally as well. So I think that that's my presentation. Connect with us through the following social media sites. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any question from the board? Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you for sharing. So, um, I would like to uh, wrap up uh, what we this read first. Uh, so, for NPCIERD, I'm the priorities on materials for energy, focus on material for energy, smart and functional materials. Uh, materials to help is in nano safety. They are looking forward to putting effort with existing and new collaborators, both national and international.